Hi, my name is Mark Joseph and I'm a South Florida family law attorney. And you're here to find out five things about guardian ad litems in Florida family law cases. But before we begin, I ask that you like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified of any upcoming videos as well as to see all the previous videos that we've uploaded. <laughs> So guardian ad litems are used in Florida family law cases to essentially help the court have an understanding of what's going on in what could likely be complex or very intensive family law cases where it includes a child or children. Another thing to keep in mind is that guardian ad litems aren't used on every family law case, but usually when there's high conflict, very serious allegations, or just very difficult circumstances that just simple litigation between parties and their attorneys may not be able to flesh out the best interest needs of the child or children is when guardian ad litems tend to come in. So the first thing you should know about guardian ad litems in the state of Florida is the statute. They're allowed to be appointed under Florida statute 61.401. I strongly suggest that you read that statute in general, as well as many of the other statutes that fall into Florida family law. We'll actually link a copy of the statute below. Um, but the most important aspect that you should know about the statute is that under Florida statute 61.401, that a guardian letter would be appointed when the court feels that it's in the best interest of the children or child, or there is a verified well-founded belief of abuse under the dependency statute, which is chapter 39. In family cases, a lot of that can happen, the chapter 39 kick in, but it's mainly the best interest of the child or children that family law judges would consider appointing a guardian litem and usually does so. The next thing you should know is what is a guardian ad litem? A guardian litem, it, it's, it's defined in the statute, but to really glare down on it, they're basically act as a nexus between the court and the child as well as the overall needs of the child. They pretty much do the investigation, the evaluation, and in many cases will issue what is called a report or recommendation as to what they feel should happen in the best interest of the child or children. Now keep in mind, just because that report or recommendation comes out doesn't mean the court will immediately accept it. In other words, they're not, they don't become the judge. You know, they do their investigation, they interview people, they speak to the parents, the children, any specialists, teachers, etc. But all that is is just a recommendation. The courts can go ahead and decide to accept all of it, some of it, or none of it at all. But their investigation in this overall um, process allows the court to have a better understanding of the overall facts of the case and helps the court makes an overall determination in the best interest of the child and children. So, who could be a guardian ad litem? Um, pretty much any Florida Bar licensed attorney can be a guardian as well as anybody who's been certified by either the Florida Guardian Litem Program or a nonprofit which is allowed to give that certification. Now, that's the technical aspect of it. But in my experience, most people who become Guardian Litems are typically family law practitioners and attorneys such as myself. But there's also psychologists and therapists who are very active in the family law world who I've also seen regularly get appointed as well. And in many cases, having a therapist or mental health professional be a guardian versus an attorney definitely has its benefits. Typically speaking though, in a family law case, either the judge may decide who's gonna be the guardian litem, or the parties or even the attorneys would just agree on who's going to be that guardian ad litem. If you have a case or situation in which a guardian ad litem may be necessary, and you do have counsel, it's nice to have that conversation to see based on your case of circumstances who they would consider recommending as a guardian ad litem. However, if you're representing yourself, you may have to do some additional research. 
outside of Google and the like. You may actually have to reach out to the local clerk's office to get an idea of which guardian items you would suggest for your type of case, or possibly even reach out to an attorney. Just because you're not represented doesn't mean that you couldn't reach out to an attorney or professional who may suggest you some people as well. The fourth thing you should know is what do guardians actually do? I touched on it on my second point under what is a guardian. However, I want to hone down what exactly they do. So they investigate, they evaluate the facts and circumstances, whether it be the allegations of either parents or what the court wants them to take a look at and consider. Typically, those items could include discussions of parental responsibility, time sharing, decision making for anything such as medical education, religious or other aspects of the child or children's life, amongst anything else that may be unique to this case or situation that the court feels that the guardian should take a look at. Usually as part of this process, they'll do interviews with the parties, with the child or children, other people that are important in the child or children's lives, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, psychologists, other professionals that are insurmountable in making the overall determination of what would be in the best interest of the child or children, depending on the facts. What they also do typically is that they'll do home visits and it could be for a number of reasons. Sometimes they need to see the environment in which the child is or children are. Um, they may want to do their interviews there because it's a more comfortable atmosphere or sometimes the allegations just require them to have an idea or understanding of the place or places that the children tend to reside with either parent. This may even require travel. On multiple occasions, I've traveled out of state to actually execute my obligation as a guardian ad litem, um, regardless of the condition, that actually going there, seeing the environment that the child or children is or are in, and to assist in me making my overall report, which would include my recommendations. So the fifth thing is really important, which is how do you deal with a guardian ad litem? I can say very much so that the position of the guardian ad litem is a very intrusive one when it comes to Florida families. However, in many cases, it's necessary when the case gets to a point where the court considers having a guardian litem be appointed. That being said, understanding that this person is looking at so many avenues and so many aspects of your life and in some way will be reporting to the court what they feel about your living situation, how you parent, your choices in a case or circumstances, you still want to be welcoming. It's unfortunate how sometimes good parents with good intentions cannot get those things across when they're more focused on being combative with the person who's supposed to come in and help evaluate these situations. So my best advice is to be welcoming and to be positive. Keep in mind that the guardian's job is not to just come and take your kids away. You have to be very careful in terms of how you approach them. Now, there are those situations where it could be that serious and that may be the circumstance, but nine times out of 10, if that's the situation that occurs, you're very much aware of it. However, overall, the guardian is the opportunity to be able to express and have an idea and understand what is going on in your case, being able to speak to someone to kind of tell your side to make sure that when this report's completed, that the court has a good foundation and basis, at least on your side, to make whatever decision they're gonna make in the best interest of the child or children. As a bonus, I would say whenever a guardian requests any documentation, information, or parties to interview, that you get that to them as soon as possible. I truly believe getting these items quickly and efficiently 
tends to show overall the Guardian that you're taking the situation as it seriously, and I believe it does reflect in their report and overall recommendation. Those are my five things you should know about Guardian ad litems in Florida family law cases. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, share this video, subscribe, and click the notification bells. And if you or someone you know is having a family law situation, please feel free to contact my office. We'll leave my information below. We'd love to set you up for a consultation. My name is Mark Joseph. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.